Hey folks, my guest today is Vic Chaudhry. He's the co-founder, chief technology officer and COO at Buzz Solutions, which is helping, uh, it's an AI-based software platform for power line inspections. Vic, you ready to take us to the top? Yes, sir. Thank you, Nathan, for having me. I'm excited to be here. You bet. How did you get into the power line industry? Is this a family thing or are you just passion project or what? No. So actually, I'm originally from India, New Delhi, India. Power has been, when, when I was growing up, power was was a big, uh, big, problem uh, we had constant power outages on a on a regular basis so uh, what i did in my you know college days was i got involved with a lot of environmental engineering projects and that's what i pursued for my for my undergrad as well and then uh, i came to to the us in 2015 uh, <clears throat> for my grad school at stanford university and uh, that's where i got involved in much more power projects I, I was working on a project where we were using drones to inspect uh, wind turbines and that was sponsored by pgne um, and that kind of segued uh, into the power utilities and helping them prevent, you know, wildfires and, and blackouts and those kind of, uh, you know, disasters. Oh, fascinating. Okay. So who's your customer today? Who's paying you? Yeah. So our customers are power utilities and power companies. So uh, major utilities uh, in the US and Canada. And also recently we started working with a few utilities in Australia. So we are, we are growing our customer base. And this is a, this is a big need uh, in terms of uh, great infrastructure, improvement and transformation and modernization a lot of the components electrical components on, on that grid is you know as you can see 75 years old uh which is off their shelf life so so very much needed right now there's a lot of worry right now about hackers and right product for, you know these sorts of things are you doing any anti-terrorism related stuff or you know can you help ukraine's you know make sure russia's not taking down telephone wires i mean can you do stuff like this yet yeah, not yet, but we do uh, provide a lot of security on uh, the data that is collected around grid infrastructure. So we provide cybersecurity for that, and that is critical. Uh, everything that is digital, we, we are a software digital AI company. Uh, we provide cybersecurity on top of that. So mm-hmm. hopefully, in the future, we we can provide uh, you know uh, some risk assessment, risk mitigation around you know cyber attacks and and uh, even uh, anti anti-ter- terrorism uh, initiatives, but. For now, we are just focused on modernizing the grid. And I'm sure you have a huge range, but what's the average power company pay you today per month or per year to use your technology? Yeah, so it varies uh, according to the project the power company is using or the, the uh, you know the, how big the power company is and how much mileage of lines, they, power lines they have. But we have seen a range. We have seen somewhere uh, in the range from 200,000 US dollars, uh, ARR, which is annual recurring revenue, to even $1.5 million. So we recently won a contract of $1.5 million with a major utility in, uh, in the US, and it's a multi-year contract. Got it. So $1.5 million over how many years? That's five years. Five years. Wow. And how many line, How many miles of lines will they manage with you about? So that's around 2,500 uh, miles of transmission high voltage lines. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So you have a nice usage-based upsell here, which is mileage of lines managed. That's correct. Yes. Very interesting. Okay. And again, range is cheapest customers, 200K a year. Mo- biggest one is 1.5 over five years. And it can go, <coughs> excuse me, it can go even higher than that for uh, a lot of big companies, <clears throat> especially PG&E, which is one of the biggest utility in the US. We're trying to work with them as well. Uh, they're California based. Uh, they have around 19,000 miles of, of power lines. So, mm-hmm. so it can even go above that. For someone paying you your sort of your, your lower range, 200,000 a year, about how many miles of power lines are they probably managing? So uh, on a regular basis, uh, they would, you know, somewhere around, you know, less than thousand miles of lines. Uh, but they, they do have, you know, other sites on there like substations and, uh, uh, critical towers that they want to manage as well. So, so it varies. We have also we have done projects ranging from you know 200 miles uh, of line inspections to even uh, as I was saying 2,500 miles, and it can mm-hmm. go even above that. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this: you love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. 
A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity. And red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million. Seed round, 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. But is this like a one time you inspect it once and they churn or are they, they're paying 200 grand a year for many, many years? Yeah, so it, it is a constant process. Uh, power utilities are kind of mandated to inspect their lines on a frequent basis. So they, on a uh, you know monthly basis, they would go out and uh, inspect a certain subsection of the line and that's what they complete in a year and then they have to repeat that again because uh, because of a lot of factors environmental factors all these electrical components are out in like heat snow uh, you know storms uh, <clears throat> high winds so they get damaged pretty quickly and as climate change is becoming much more uh, a, a big factor over here and weather conditions are becoming much more extreme these these components are having much more pressure on them so there's constant need for inspection as well and so how many customers, individual power companies are you working with today? So we're working with three major ones in US and Canada, and uh, we just uh, are starting to uh, work with uh, a few in Australia as well. Now, can I take three times an average of $200,000 in ACV? You're doing what, something like $50,000 a month right now in MRR? Somewhere around that, yeah. Okay. And if you're doing that today, where were you exactly a year ago? Do you remember? Yeah, so last year, um, so those those revenue numbers are, uh, you know, again, a little bit confidential. We we did um, we did started generating revenue last year, uh, and uh, those were from our initial customers. And this year, uh, I mean, we have seen uh, we're projecting a big ramp up in our in our revenue. Uh, I mean, can can you break a million dollar run rate this year? You think? We are we are aiming for that. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, got it. But just to be clear, uh, uh, so no revenue before last year. Last year was your first dollar, and this year you're somewhere sorry, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month right now. Yeah, so somewhere around that range. Uh, so twenty twenty was when we were doing a lot of uh, proof of concepts with utilities, uh, a lot of free POCs, and then last year we started doing paid pilots and uh, some initial full full uh, you know full projects, and then this year we are scaling up to more utilities. Mm -hmm. And when did you launch the business? First line of code was written in what year? Yeah, so we launched in uh, 2017, but uh, the first two years we were working on building uh, proprietary data sets for the machine learning and computer vision algorithms we had. So we were collecting a lot of data from, you know, partnering with various utilities across geographies and then various, uh, you know, electrical organizations uh, uh, like uh, EPRI. So we, we were working with partnering with them and uh, working on building the product. And then we launched our first commercial, uh, you know, version of the product in late 2019. And that's mm -hmm. when we started seeing a lot of POCs. When, so 2017 to 2020, I mean, there's three years where you're basically having to either raise capital or live off your life savings because you're not making money from the company yet. So how did you fund the business and the MVP? Did you raise or was it life savings? Yeah. So uh, initially we did uh, win a grant, uh, which is, uh, which was Tom Starr's grant. It's called Tomcat Innovation Transfer Grant from Stanford University. So we launched out of Stanford and uh, they, uh, they kind of scope out uh, companies or startups that are in the- How much was that grant? That was $50,000. Okay. We, raised, uh, we, we got uh, grant money for, and then we bootstrapped uh, all the way. And then uh, in mid, I would say mid 2020, June, 2020 is when we raised our first uh, seed round of funding. So I think you raised 1.2 million then, correct? That's correct, yes. And most folks, when they're raising a seed, it's like a five to 10 million cap. Were you sort of in that range? Yeah, that's correct. 
Okay, fair enough. And then have you raised any other capital since then or are you bootstrapping? Yeah, so recently we uh, closed another round of funding of uh, you know 1.2 million, which is again mm-hmm. a seed extension. And uh, we are moving towards <clears throat> our series A, uh, uh, aiming for that going forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, so seed extension, do you raise it up to basically the same valuation or is it more like a 10 million valuation this time? Yeah, it's an increased valuation, uh, which is we are keeping it in wraps, but yes, it, it's an increased valuation than before. And why do an extension versus a traditional Series A? I mean, it maybe was revenue a little low to go do a traditional Series A? Uh, it was mostly because a lot of the the projects that we were running with customers, they were aligning at the same time. And uh, we did need some uh, resources on our side support uh, in terms of engineering and customer support. And we wanted to provide that to our customers. So we were running a lot of projects in tandem, which were three major utilities in tandem. And uh, we did needed some fuel at that point. So uh, we, we got a, an extension basically because of that project-based approach. Uh, we could have gone for Series A, but uh, those projects were moving at the same time and procurement was having, uh, happening at the same time. And we just mm-hmm. wanted to deliver. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. What's the team size today? How many people? So we are currently 12 people, uh, but we are actively hiring for multiple engineering and project management roles. How many engineers today full-time? We have uh, nine engineers and uh, three, eight to nine engineers and, and three non-technical roles. That's great. Now, before we wrap up, I am, I mean, the technology here, right? So are you actually, I imagine you're using someone else's drone and then you're embedding your own software in that drone that ties back to like a computer UI or something. Is that how it works? That's correct. So we provide a digital kind of software platform that is powered by our proprietary computer vision models to do anomaly detection and asset detection. So a lot of machine vision uh, stuff and also data management and, and uh, analysis and visualization. Uh, we do use data that is captured from by utilities. So utilities are already, they have drone teams, they have helicopter teams that are going out in the field, capturing, you know, hundreds of thousands of images and, you know, even millions of images now with much more frequent inspection on an annual basis. Mm-hmm. So they are flying the vehicles and consider drone like a mobile sensor. So they're flying the drones along the lines, uh, capturing all that data. Uh, they are even contracting out drone service providers uh, that are independent drone service providers that are providing those services. So we collect everything that happens in the field comes back. We we process it. We make insights out of it and send it back to the utilities. Is there anything preventing one utility company from buying this and then using it to scan their competitors' lines to look at what their public earnings might look like next quarter? Yeah. So usually utilities uh, don't really compete. Um, they are mostly geographical based and uh, okay then let's um, use a hedge fund as an example right if if a, if, a, if a hurricane really knocks out lines for one company maybe their stock's going to go down next quarter a hedge fund wants to know that can the hedge fund buy your service to monitor th- those lines so currently we are just selling it to utilities uh to to monitor their lines uh, again we 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 sell our services as a subscription you know a standard enterprise SaaS based uh platform uh so if if there if there was a need uh to Kind of, we've talked to insurance companies as well. Um, yeah, you know, especially in the wildfire domain, um, and and we want to help everyone, especially you know utilities. We don't want anyone to compete. It's it's a it's a problem that we all are facing as a society, and we want to you know uh, kind of mitigate that and do risk mitigation with that problem with our services. Vic, very cool. Love the vision. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Uh, zero to one. Number two, My is there a. C- is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, let's see. I mean, the classic is Elon Musk, again, technology visionary. But um, recently, the Twitter's new CEO, Parag Agrawal, as well. Number three is, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Uh, let's see. Online tool. Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Number, <laughs> number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I would say five to six hours. I try to optimize. And, and Vic, what's your situation? Married, single kids? Single. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 29. 29. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Patience. Uh, Being patient and being persistent. Uh, That's the key. Guys, Buzz Solutions launched from a grant back in 2017 at Stanford. Vic said, you know what? I grew up in India. Power outages were always an issue. I need to create software that allows power companies to manage their lines and the breakages and issues and damage much faster. And that's what he's doing now, working with three customers, doing between caught 40 and 60,000 bucks a month in MRR, trying to break a million this year. Uh, they've raised 2.4 million to date, uh, most recently 1.2 million seat extension this year. Team of 12 people actively hiring engineers as they look to scale this product again, which helps power companies manage and monitor those lines. Vic, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. 
One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.